So when the Wilson disease was first officially described in 1912, there was no treatment for that. It was almost a dead end therapy, means you have a diagnosis and people will die in four to five years. And this is one of those genetic disorders where down the time we have known what is the gene causing it and what is the issue happening with that. And over the time, treatments have changed. And now we almost have so good treatments that people can lead a near qual normal quality of life. So Wilson disease is one of those disorders where a genetic disorder is there, metabolic issue is there, and treatment is also available where people can lead a better quality of life. We have different therapies for these things. The simplest is decoppering therapies, what you call it, because the copper is getting accumulated in your body, in your blood, in your brain system. We give medications to take away that copper. There are different mechanisms to work on that. Some of the drug names just to tell would have been like penicillamine, trientine, zinc, tetraaminothelium, ammonium These are the commonly known medications which are used to do it. Even in some patients, we can do liver transplantations to have good outcomes out of that. Off late newer therapies are coming up. We hope that that will also change with the newer therapies what we can see over the next few decades. So what is happening in Wilson disease? lot of genes are being discovered, lot of mutations. Even the gene is same, there are different mutations across different subset of patients. Even like the European population, the mutation is different as against the mutations what we see in Indian patients, as against to North American or the East Asians or like, like Japan, China, what is going on. And based upon these mutations, the type of presentation means whether the person will have early onset, let us say at the age of around 8 years, 9 years, 10 years, or people will have onset of symptoms at around 20 years, 30 years or 40 years or do vary. It also has some technologies where people have different set of symptoms. Means some people will just present with jaundice, some people will just, can just present with neurological symptoms like tremors, dystonia, delayed scholastic performances can happen and we are trying to understand how genes are contributing to it. Of late different technologies are coming up like the CRISPR technologies and other things are vector based therapies which can target the specific gene abnormality what is happening and modify those things and possibly to slow down the process or to stop the process. We may hope that these technologies may come down as a newer therapies for uh, patients with Wilson disease based upon their genetic mutations for next decade or so. That's a assumption what we are having. Uh, just to, uh, to end, Wilson disease is something uh, what I would like to tell is this is one movement disorder which gives you a satisfaction of treating because a person, a child, most of the time we see children or in the young teens who come to us in wheelchair bound or bed bound proper diagnosis, proper treatment, make them walking, running, going to the school. So this is something we should remember. This is a quite treatable disorder. Recognition is important, something which we shouldn't miss out at all as a neurologist or as a, any physician at any level. So high degree of suspicion, I will definitely tell because my talk is on Wilson disease. So when trying to tell that, please don't miss out a possible diagnosis of Wilson disease.